Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Lacey, and I am the medical director of the Atlanta School of Sleep Medicine. And I'm going to be talking today with Cecile Jones and asking a few questions and having a short discussion on the expanded role of nurse practitioners and physicians assistants in the field of sleep medicine. So Cecile, how did you first get into the field of sleep medicine as a nurse practitioner? It started because of the volume that we started to see in a specialty practice of pulmonary where um, the patients who were in need of sooner or quicker follow-up um, we were not able to get to that in a timely manner um, and as the physician team and myself uh, reviewed uh, we felt that could be a very viable avenue for me to be able to assist and get these patients seen sooner and get their therapy began or begun and um, be able to uh, fine-tune their therapy uh, in their sleep disorders. What is the primary duties that you currently perform in seeing sleep patients at the clinic where you work? The primary duty I see is immediate follow-up so that we can assure that um, their therapy is not only appropriate and adequate, but that they're tolerating it. And for those who've ever uh, worked with patients in sleep disorders, we know that it's often a very um, tenuous process to allow them to get to that uh, fine-tuned um, place that they need to be and be therapeutic. Okay. What's a typical interaction like with you when you see a sleep patient in your clinic? That's a great experience, I have to say, first of all. Um, I have the opportunity to see a patient many times two to three days after they've had a, their very first polysomnogram, many times after they've had um, a pap titration study. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with that, those are the studies necessary to diagnose apnea and to um, uh, treat apnea with uh, continuous positive airway pressure. Um, it's a opportunity to start engaging their needs and be able to apply therapy immediately and help them adapt to therapy. Um, we typically have about a 30-minute visit where they're able to see uh, the practitioner during that time, get all of their questions answered, which is a huge, huge um, need of theirs, uh, and help them to adapt to the process and find out if they're not adapting, what we can do to make that better. What do you find personally for you that you enjoy most in your role as a sleep medicine practitioner as opposed to say the role that you used to play in a specialty medicine practice? I really enjoy being able to just see, reap the benefits of what I have established with them so early on. One of the highlights for me is a patient who has begun therapy, struggled along the first several weeks to uh, maybe a month or so and come to that place where they're able to tolerate their therapy and we're able to see life-changing um, events take place in their life just because they're sleeping well and or their apnea is taken care of. And that is huge for me. Based on the experience that you've accumulated thus far and the way that you've grown personally in, in evolving from a specialty medicine practice to a sleep medicine practice, where do you see the role of nurse practitioners and sleep physicians evolving to in the future with respect to sleep medicine? Well, I believe that nurse practitioners and physician assistants have a perfect place in this particular field. And it was, a, it was my sponsoring physician initially who he and I discussed this and felt that there was uh, opportunities there. But the ability to be able to spend a little bit more time with your patient when you have that knowledge base in sleep um, affects every one of the patients that all of us see in any practice because everyone has to sleep. And no matter what their disorder is, our ability to be able to focus and specialize on that and spend that little time makes all the difference to the patient's um, success many times in therapy. You know, I'm sure that you received a lot of training and advice and kind of hands-on with the physicians that you worked with, but in terms of formal educational exposure and training, what kind of, of training did you receive as you were going through your basic training to become a nurse practitioner? Unfortunately, there is no formal training um, that's available in the curriculum currently for nurse practitioners and physician assistants. Um, I would love to see a more formalized program 
um, available to them uh, and to us. Right now there's course courses that you can take through different programs that specialize in nurse practitioners or specialize in, in uh, continuing education for physician assistants and you'll get occasional programs that will address some of the specifics of apnea or insomnia, maybe even restless leg, but there's nothing comprehensive to really train you in sleep. So what would you recommend then going forward in terms of some type of, of formal um, educational initiative or endeavors for a nurse practitioner or physician's assistant with respect to kind of enhancing their sleep expertise or increasing their knowledge base in sleep medicine? Well, there's no doubt that they need to um, literally embrace every diagnosis or, or the major diagnoses, I should say, within sleep because it is in itself um, a complete specialty, as you know. Um, the need for education and educating yourself and by a formalized program would be fantastic. Um, to be able to learn the, the technical parts of each major diagnosis that is embraced in sleep medicine is um, would be invaluable to um, a person wanting to have a better knowledge base in sleep. Seeing patients achieve immediate gratification um, and, and as a provider being able to offer that to them and see the fruits of your labor literally within weeks sometimes is just a very strong asset to practice and it's very nice to have that where many of our colleagues don't always have that opportunity in many of the specialties uh, that they're involved with patients right now. Well, thank you again, Cecile, for coming out and answering the questions here, and we look forward to seeing you as a faculty member at our, at our upcoming course for nurse practitioners and physician's assistants in April. You're welcome, Dr. Lacey. I look forward to it.